As a photographer, one of the most asked questions I get is how I come up with my photo shoots and the ideas behind my photo shoots. So in today's video, I'll be walking you guys through my workflow from conceptualizing a photo shoot to the actual photo shoot itself and all the steps in between and my reasoning behind them and just overall how I can go from an idea to a final image. So if this is something that interests you, make sure you stick around for the entire video so you guys don't miss out on anything. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe and drop a like and comment. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and start talking about my process. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Waldo. I'm a photographer based out of Los Angeles and I go by the alias moody dark room on the internet and I like to create a lot of ethereal and dark portraits and I always get asked how I come up with these ideas how I come up with the lighting how I come up with the mood and all of that and I've never actually like written it down and explained it before so in today's video I'm gonna be explaining the entire process for those of you who are interested in that so basically I break down my process into three different steps the first step is the concept phase the second step is the scouting phase and then the last step is the actual photo photo shoot and what I do during a photo shoot to make sure that the image that I had in my head actually can come to life. So this is like the general phases, but I'm gonna break down each and every single one of these phases and what each of these phases entails and what I do during these phases to make sure that I can get the kind of photos that I wanna get at the end. So let's begin the breakdown with the first step, which is the concept phase. Now within the concept phase, I'm basically doing two different things. I'm doing the pre-planning and the actual concept mapping. And I'm gonna go ahead and explain what those are and what I do during those steps. So the first thing is the pre-planning. And this is a step that I basically do 24 seven. And what it basically is, is where I'm getting my inspiration for my photos. I always get asked, where do I find inspiration? And basically I get inspiration from three different places. And the three different places I get inspiration from are music, movies, and other photographers. Now, I try not to get inspiration from other photographers because I don't want to look at someone else's work and be like, whoa, that's really cool. I want to go and copy that. When I'm creating work, I want my work to be as me as possible. I don't want to take someone else's concept and just redo it in my own way. I want to try and make as unique of photos as possible. So when I'm getting inspiration, I try and find inspiration from things that aren't other photographers. Now, I'd be lying if I said I have never taken inspiration from other photographers because I have some of the photographers that I've taken inspiration from and have learned from through studying their work are uh, people like Gregory Crudson, but I try not to copy their work too much and I try to make sure that my photography is not like a copy paste of their work. There are some similarities between the photos that I take and the photos of photographers that I've gotten inspired from, but they aren't like a copy paste like some people on the internet do. And because we're always on social media, it can be kind of hard to use your phone and go on the internet and not draw direct inspiration and try and copy concepts from other photographers and other visual artists. But you know what's not hard is creating your very own website with today's sponsor, Zyro. Zyro is the best bang for buck website builder out there, but don't let its low rate fool you. From their large selection of templates, great AI tools, and their built-in store features, you'll have no problem building an amazing website using Zyro. They offer rates as low as $3 a month, and for a limited time, if you use my code MOODYDARKROOM or click the first link in the description below, you'll get an additional three months free and a free domain with any of their yearly plans. I've been using Zyro for my website for the past year and absolutely love it, so if you're considering building a new website or just want to save some money from your current plan, consider switching to Zyro. Now back to the video. My main source of inspiration is actually music. And some of the artists that I like to listen to when I'm trying to create a concept are Cottonwood Firing Squad, Dreams We've Had, Kanye, Bon Iver, Jimmy Somewhere, uh, Johnny Goth, and a host of other amazing artists that aren't really too mainstream, but they just create a very unique sound that I really like. And when I'm listening to these artists and their music, I try to replicate the vibe that I get from their music in my photos. And if you guys would listen to the music that I just listed off and some of these artists, you guys would instantly make the connection on where my inspiration comes from. My photos definitely have the same vibe as the sound that these artists create. And if you guys are curious and listening to some of the music that I listen to, I have actually created a playlist that I'll link in the description below that has all of my favorite music and all of the music that I typically listen to when I'm um, trying to create some concepts and just trying to find inspiration in general. Once I've gone ahead and listened to a song that I like and have decided to do a photo shoot, I then go into the second step of the concept phase, which is the concept mapping. And in this phase, I basically just set down a couple of guidelines that I'm going to 
try to adhere to in order to create the concept that I have in mind. And these things are simple things like color, setting, mood, posing, and the subject itself. And I do these through very just primitive little doodles where I can kind of establish a very general composition in my head um, with the type of lighting that I want to do, the setting that I want to do, how I want to set up the posing, and then also where the subject is going to be in the photo. And once I kind of begin to envision these things in my mind, I like to jot them down just to make sure that I don't forget them. However, this step is a step that I can also sometimes just completely skip altogether. And sometimes I just listen to a song and, and tell myself I want to take photos and just start taking photos and don't have anything in mind before the photo shoot and just kind of just go off of vibes alone. Uh, but sometimes I do like to sit down and I like to map out an entire concept. Um, I don't map it out too extensively because I like there to be room for change and room for adjustment when it comes time to shoot. But I do like to get a general kind of idea of where I want to take the photo shoot and the kind of photos that I want to capture at the end. And this also helps make the scouting easier because if I can give someone the general idea of the photos that I want to capture. It's easier to coordinate when we both have an idea of what the photos are going to look like versus just me knowing what they're going to look like in my head. So once I finish the concept phase and I have an idea and a concept mapped out in my head, I then begin the scouting phase. And in this phase, I basically just look for two things. And that's what model I'm going to shoot with and where I'm going to shoot it. When it comes to the model, I typically like to just ask friends because when I'm shooting with friends, it's just a lot easier to get the concept done because we've already shot before in the past we have a lot better chemistry it's not as much pressure to take good photos like if if i shoot with a friend and the photos come out bad then you know we can both just kind of laugh it off um, but if i shoot with someone that's you know looking to get some good photos and i don't end up liking the photos then i feel like i've wasted their time and i've wasted my time and i've wasted everyone's time so i'd like to just shoot with friends and make it a lot less of a pressure environment because then we're both able to kind of create better work anyways um, but if i can't shoot with a friend because they're all busy then i usually go on instagram i put out a little casting call ask if anyone's available and then kind of sift through the replies and find someone that I think would be good fit for the photo shoot. Once I have a model figured out, then I just figure out a location. When it comes to location, I'm not really too picky on it because the location doesn't make my photos. Um, my photos are typically carried by the lighting. Um, so location doesn't really matter too much. So unless it's a very specific concept where I need a location, I typically just shoot against a white backdrop or a colored backdrop and keep it pretty minimal because the focus is on the model and the lighting anyways. But sometimes when I do need an actual location, you know, luckily I live in LA where there's a bunch of different locations you can find on PeerSpace. Um, and I also just know people and have some connections with some studios. So I just hit them up, be like, hey, are you available? this day at this time can i come through and do a little photo shoot in those kind of situations i take photos i benefit from it and then i also let the studio use my photos to promote their studio on peer space so they also benefit from it and we all benefit mutually and it's a good connection to have once i've established a model and a location we also just establish a date um, and then from there we move on to phase three which is the actual photo shoot phase and in this photo shoot phase, it's what I'm actually doing the day of the photo shoot to get the type of photos that I want. And there's three things that I really try to nail down when I'm doing a photo shoot, and that's lighting, setting, and composition. And let me just explain what these are. So the first and most important thing to me is lighting. And obviously I'm known for my use of light within my photos. That's like the number one thing people immediately recognize when they see my photos is the way that I use light. So I try to make sure that I know where the lights are gonna be placed within the scene before I even start shooting because this is gonna be a lot more of an important thing to my style and my photography as a whole than any of the other things. So lighting is always gonna be the most important thing to me. I like to establish a couple of different lighting situations in my head before I even go into the photo shoot, but come the day of the photo shoot, I like to set up the lighting and I like to take my time when I'm setting up the lighting. I don't wanna rush it and then just end up not getting the type of light that I want because if, it, if the light doesn't look good to me, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna send out the photos because it's not true to my style. So I always make sure to take my time, make sure the lighting is on point, make sure I do enough tests beforehand to make sure that the lighting is how I want it to. And then I begin actually taking photos. And keep in mind when I'm lighting up a scene, I'm also keeping in mind how I'm gonna edit the photo. So it might be a little underexposed in the actual scene itself, but I'm doing it because I'm pre protecting the highlights. I'm doing it because I know that in post, I'll be able to bring up the shadows. I know. I'm doing it because I know that if I can keep as much information as possible, I can get a certain look in post. So lighting 
it all comes down to just knowing how light works and how it interacts with the model. And that's the number one thing I try to establish first when it comes down to the photo shoot. The second thing is the actual setting itself. So if I'm shooting on a location, um, this is going to be a lot more important than shooting against a white backdrop. But if I'm on, the, on a location where anyone else in the world can come and rent this place and shoot at this place, um, I try to make this the space as mine as possible. And I do this by changing up things. I like to change up the decorations or I like to change up the scene if the studio allows it. Always make sure you ask first or make sure that you read the rules because some locations don't let you change things, but a lot of them do as long as you put them back after you're done. So if they do allow you to change things, then just switch it up so that when someone comes and shoots at the same place, it doesn't look exactly like your photos. So I like to just change little things here and there. Um, anything that I can do to make the photo more mine and more uh, unique to me, because if I just shoot at a random place and don't change anything, then someone can just come and do the exact same thing. And at the end of the day, I want my photos to stand out. So obviously I'm gonna try and do as much as I can to make sure that the setting is as mine as possible. And that leads me to the third step in the photo shoot phase, and that is the actual composition. So when it comes to the composition, similar to the setting, I try to find ways to make my photos stand out and my photos unique. And especially when I'm shooting at a location that anyone else can rent, I try to use different focal lengths. I try to shoot at angles that aren't typically shot at. I try and shoot uh, in a way that's just, it has my style written all over it so that people can distinguish that it's my photo and that it's in my style and that they immediately recognize who shot that photo. I also do these things to make sure that when I'm creating a photo, there's a lot of depth in the image because using the lighting, setting and composition will allow you to create depth in a photo. And even if I'm just shooting against just a white backdrop, there are ways to make a photo look more full and more 3D because at the end of the day, a photo is just a 2D image. So if it's if it looks 2D, it's gonna be less pleasing to the eye. So you always wanna establish depth in an image and you do that through modifying the light, modifying the setting and modifying the compositions. And those are all three things that even if you're shooting against a white backdrop, you'll be able to change in order to make the photo look more full of depth. And when I'm shooting against like a white backdrop, that's why I use a lot of smoke because that smoke helps instill some atmosphere, which helps with creating depth in the photo. If I'm shooting on location, I like to position things in the foreground, things in the background, you know, things out of focus, in focus to establish some depth. And when I'm doing my compositions, again, I like to make sure that there's some foreground, the actual subject and then some background. And if I'm shooting against like a white backdrop, then I just make sure that, uh, you know, the composition is just set up in a way where you can still feel like it's a lot bigger of a space than it actually is. Even when I'm shooting against like my little white backdrops, um, I guess, well, they're not that little, but when I'm shooting against my white backdrops, I, you know, I always get asked, if I have like a psych wall because it just looks like a lot bigger of a space than it actually is. And you do that through your composition, your setting and your lighting. And at the end of the day, if you can create a photo that has a lot of depth, it'll inherently be a lot better photo than something that looks flat, looks plain, looks basic, has very boring lighting. And is at a place where anyone else can come and shoot um, with a very basic composition. So that's kind of what goes in my head when I'm creating concepts. That's the general workflow that I like to follow whenever I'm doing any photo shoots. And I basically just apply these things to whatever I have in mind. And every time I do a photo shoot, this, this is basically the steps that I take to get to there. Whenever I want to do a photo shoot, this is basically the steps that I take to go from a simple vibe all the way to a final image. But yeah, that about does it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you follow me at my social medias. That's at Moody Darkroom on everything. And I will see you guys in the next one. See ya. And then yeah, let's do...